Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're well. Today I have a very special guest. Her name is Alice. She's here for today's video. And as you can see, today's video involves dining. And we're going to talk about dining etiquette. But before I start, I wanted to just say hi. Hi. <laughs> I hope you guys know her. She's called Alice Sylvia on her YouTube, on her Instagram. I uh, just bumped into her the other day, um, my team uh, mentioned, and when I went I, to check out the YouTube videos, I loved what she's doing and the topic. She talks about a variety of things that is her life in terms of home care, her everyday life as a wife. And so I thought she'd be the perfect guest today because she's interested in all things beautiful and all things elegant. Yeah, so welcome Alice. Thank you so much. It's good to be in your channel today. Thank you, thank you very much. So people please, before I even start, make sure you follow her on YouTube, on Instagram, and watch her videos. They are very interesting and very well done, if I might say so myself. So please go and watch and subscribe. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So guys, today is dining etiquette, so I'm going to just talk about dining etiquette. I know what people would uh, ask what dining etiquette is, it's just good manners at the table, uh, just basic um, everyday uh, skills when you go to a restaurant, someone's house for dinner, even in your own house. So guys don't fret, I'm not talking about uh, dining like the queen, uh, it's just basic, although there's also that, but today is just basic dining etiquette. And before we start, we'll just have a small talk about what you've seen, what you've experienced and why dining etiquette is important. Uh, so Alice, I just want to ask, like, what's your experience with uh, dining etiquette? Me, I'll be very honest. Uh, I grew up. Kumtani <laughs> to come easy. So explain, like, what's your experience with dining etiquette, and is it something that you've seen, observed? Yeah, actually, it's something I've just learned on the way. It's mm -hmm. not something I was born with. Mm -hmm. It's not something we used to do in our homes mm -hmm. because. In our homes, we would just eat. Chakula imeiva, come pick your plate. And Nakula kule mko. Exactly. <laughs> so, it's something I've learned with time. Mm. When we go to school and when we travel a lot, mm. and the people we mingle with, it, it, it makes you just get exposed to these things, and then you flow with it. Mm. You get to do what is being done out there. Yeah, true. Yes. I just remember when we were small, you know, maybe you grew up at the same time as me during those days. Actually, we used to eat in the kitchen. It was for guests. It, the table sure was, was only when you have visitors, mm -hmm. maybe mama wa chama wamekuja for your mom. Just that. Mm -hmm. Even your mother, your father, they never used to sit on the table, mm -hmm. on the dining table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As kids, we used to eat everywhere. Kitchen, kwa stairs. Kila pahali. Kila pahali. <laughs> At a bedroom. At a bedroom. <laughs> to be true. Yeah. To be honest, even I uh, learned this on my own. Traveling. Um, Maybe with your partner, you go somewhere, he has business meetings. I remember the first time, it was very overwhelming. <laughs> you know, where do I start? <laughs> and then you have to wait for the person who knows what they are doing, doing. so that you can copy what they are doing. True. That is the first learning process, even for me, actually. Yes, yes. true. So, uh, people don't be scared. We also, like she said, we, we are all learning, and we are learning every day. It doesn't mean that we know everything. Today, we'll just share with you the things that we have learned has my experience and my experience. I've just remembered when uh, when the they never used to use the dishes for the guests. They were kept I don't know if everyone had a wall in Does anyone really have a wall in this? No. <laughs> they used to have very big ones. Uh -huh. And they keep on buying dishes. Zingina is a chama. Chama wana piano dishes at the end of the it's month. You're right, it's true. Now kwa two hapo. As it miki they mm. waiting when there is a function, I teach with Yombo Apeleke. But at home you never use them. Right. They used to <laughs> funny enough, our moms used to give our neighbors the dishes. Yes. Since we got to the to the plastic. Very true, by the way. Ama zile Zile is little melanin. Exactly. Zile ziko boni boni. Ziko kama yes. I think the melanin. Melanin. It's melanin, yes. And back as I work on is of it. Ziko at is of Yombo na has it na wamezeka, you don't know where they're going to take the dishes. They're yeah. still there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we believe in um use it. like we are a different generation. We believe in enjoying the good things ourselves. Yes. We don't save it at if for a special day. That is true. So also this is uh, a reminder to all of us, treat yourself, have that fine dining with your friends, use those cutlery glasses. 
Because of you come back to And when you buy them, buy them for you and oh, your family. Enjoy, nice use them maybe once in a week, have a dinner date at home. Oh, nice. Use the dishes. Yeah. Yeah, I it, saw a video for you and your, when you're sitting at the table for your husband. It's yeah. really nice. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you, Kathy. I try to do it at least once a week. So sometimes it's really hectic. Mm. It's you know with our work, mm. the business. Mm. Sometimes it's 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 crazy. But I try and sacrifice just one one day in a week, because we get to bond, spend time together, talk about what has been happening, without the bash of the hardships of the week, without talking about the bills and all those hard stuff. Yeah. So I think That's it's good also idea. good for people to observe it and maybe have a dinner date with their family and just make it a special day. When schools are open, kids are going to school, you don't get to spend so much time with them, That's you're true. working, your partner is also at work and most of the time maybe you don't even get home at four, most of the time you come at eight, you're tired. Yeah, so when you have that special day, you at least create moments with your family. I think, thank you for sharing that, that's a good idea. I also try to do dinner once a week. Try and do this at your, at your house with your kids, your family. Um, like she said, she's benefited from it and they get to spend time and talk about things in general and just catch up. Um, another pet peeve of mine is when people are invited for dinner or rest, go for restaurant dates, uh, coming late, uh, she can invite me for dinner at her house. Dinner is, you're told be seated by 8 or dinner is being served at 8 and you show up at 10 o'clock. Have you experienced something like that? Yeah, by the way, people should also learn to keep time, especially when it's dinner, either at home, hotels, wherever. Because if, um, as Kathy had mentioned before, if it's not a buffet kind of serving, it's dinner, then you're supposed to keep time so that food doesn't get cold and it's served on time. Mm. Yeah, and also being punctual, it's good because if the host has sacrificed his or her time to host you specific time, you should also make effort. The fact that you accepted to be there, make effort to be there on time. Good. Yeah. yeah. That's, and if, for example, you have, I'll give an example, they say me and make have been better to our house. Um, I have work and maybe I'll be 10 minutes late. I won't let her know the day, I'll let her know that the day before I'll be like, good morning Alice, um, today in the office I'll have to say 30 minutes late, Mike will come ahead, kindly forgive me and I'll let her know, but not to let her know one hour before the dinner, it's, it's, it's not very kind. And I'm not saying these things because I'm perfect, but I mean imezifanya. No one is perfect actually. Yeah. 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 We all up. get late. Yeah. 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 You, you, the traffic also, mm. you underestimate how it's going to be. Mm. Yeah. So it has happened to us, but also through growing, um, getting older and learning and experience, we've learned to try to be punctual. Uh, secondly, um, if you're told to RSVP, please RSVP. Yeah. Because sometimes you're told to RSVP so that the host can cater for everyone and ensure the number of people who are coming. Then you don't RSVP and then you're at the door. <laughs> <laughs> and the arrangements for everybody are not there. The plates are not enough, the food. The, you know some things if you're serving something like salmon, for example, mm. for example, or maybe steak, you need to have enough pieces for everybody. Mm. So it is a good thing. It's, it's, it's just kind to RSVP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's kind to RSVP. Another thing is to ensure to Bring something to the host's house, you know, um, a bottle of wine, flowers. Like I'm sure she knows many ideas of gifts. <laughs> yeah. I think for dinner, mostly wine, mm -hmm. it's a perfect gift. Mm -hmm. And flowers, mm -hmm. actually, those are those are very perfect because you can't come carrying sugar and milk. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, shopping. Yeah, so. I can only do that if I know you, if I'm your close friend. Yeah, or if you're not coming for dinner, if you're just coming mm -hmm. maybe for Saturday afternoon or something okay. like, like that, then okay. you can carry milk, sugar. You know, yeah. all that, yes. Mm -hmm. But for dinner, maybe a bottle of wine, as Kathy has said, and flowers. That really go well. Okay. Good. Yeah. But so, don't carry flowers for a guy if he's the one who is hosting. <laughs> yeah, I think for a guy to be a whiskey. A whiskey. Wine. Or, yeah. Uh-huh, I, I think, think so. so. Yes. I can't, guy, I've never been with <laughs> I can't do my time when we were dating. Hey, men were not uh, calling you for dinner in their home, so we have not experienced that. <laughs> That's a good one. So yeah, so for guys, don't bring the flowers. If, unless he or he likes flowers. Yeah. 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 Okay. I try to think of other pet peeves. Can you remember anything else about 
plus one? Um, yeah, when you're invited and you're just invited alone, if you want to carry someone along, let the host know you're coming with someone. Mm -hmm. If you want to come with, if you're coming by yourself, it's just fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you've been told one, just one, if you want to come too, but don't, don't overdo this thing of you've been married for dinner, you and your partner, or you and your spouse, or you and your whoever you're dating, and then you come five of you, it's very inconsiderate. And I also think it depends with the kind of dinner you're going for. If it's a couple kind of a thing, then you don't have to carry your girlfriend and your husband, and maybe the host is just a husband and herself. It will look, it's, okay. it's out of place, I mean, mm. yeah. Okay, so let's be conscious about that. So when you invite someone, make sure, like you said, be punctual, RSVP, bring something with you, ensure that you come um, the number that is stated on the invite um, yeah and I think that's it um, those are basically those are some of the basics before we start now with the etiquette rules on the table so now guys you've already done all that you're on time you've already repeated you've come with your little something you're on time um, you go to your host and normally you don't go straight to the dining table no yeah. you you take a lead from your host mm -hmm. yes so like let's say the host tells you to sit down and maybe have a drink and have some some nuts or something, some fruits before they arrange themselves. So you follow your host, get it down and you wait. True. Until you're called to the table. So like Ali said, follow your host. So don't come and... Yeah, it doesn't matter even if it's your close friend. Yeah. Yeah. So that remember to follow your host. Um, then after that your host when they are ready uh, like she said follow your host again to the table she's the one who will call everyone to the table and she will lead you to where to sit and when she leads you to where to sit she will be the one so now I'm making her my host yeah so we need to make this dinner happen so <laughs> so the host will show you where to sit um, it's very impolite to insist to sit with your friend or your partner true because the point of the dinner is to uh, talk, chat, engage, so the host will dictate who is sitting where. So the host wants to mix up everyone so the conversation can flow. So wherever the host has seated you, that's where you sit. That's very true. Mm. And especially when, when you are just having dinner, the two of us, mm. and I'm the host, mm. I'll consider giving you a seat where there is a um, maybe a vocal point, mm -hmm. maybe the vocal wall, or maybe mm -hmm. the entrance, mm -hmm. yes. But then when we are more than two, mm -hmm. then it's, it's the host to choose where to, to give you the chair, where to lead you to sit. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so guys, don't take yourself to the table and insist to sit with your boyfriend and husband, and then what happens is you just talk with that person. Exactly, you'll just be whispering the both of you, and uh, then the, the, the chatting over the table will not flow. Mm -hmm. Instead, if he sits maybe across, mm -hmm. then the conversation we can we can we can have the conversation. The, the whole of the table. Yes, yeah, the whole exactly. Of the table, yeah. So <laughs> once I was led you to your seat, you sit down, and now I'll turn my chair. So once you come to the table, you immediately uh, take your napkin and place it on your lap. That's the first move. Sorry guys, I forgot to come up with white napkins, so I have Christmas napkins. <laughs> It's not yet Christmas, but yeah. So you put it on your lap. I know people sometimes put it here, uh, but it's advisable to put it on your lap. Yeah, so that's step one. And then um, we have a menu with us today. You can decide to look at your menu. Some houses, it, some, your, it depends on your host. Have they put a menu for you? Have they not? So I put a menu out for my guests. So I'll just open it and have a look of what we're having. So today, Alice will tell us what you're having. Okay, today I will start with a pumpkin soup. That will be my starter. Mm -hmm. Pumpkin soup with uh, garlic. Yes. Croutons. Garlic croutons. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then uh, mains is a pan seared lamb chops, mm -hmm. spinach, salmon, sherry tomatoes, avocados, honey glazing. Mm -hmm. And there is a dessert. Carrot cake and uh, custard. Yes. Yes. So that's um, you read your menu, and obviously um, you put the menu on the side, and the guest, uh, the host will take the menu away because now you're aware of what you're having. 
okay so this is a is a place where if you have any medical allergies it is preferable to let your host know before if let's say you're allergic to nuts you're allergic to fish let your host know before uh, because like you've seen the menu is already stated so it's very hard to tell your host when you're at the table um i don't eat lamb or I'm medically allergic to lamb and i said medically allergic know that you do not eat medically allergic what that what will react with you so let your host know on text or on email what you're allergic to before you come yeah because at the table it's a bit too late yeah because everything has already been prepared and it's oh. unlikely that you're going to go back to the kitchen to prepare something even yeah. you may not have an option exactly oh. so once your napkin is on your on your lap uh, it's very good manners not to come to the table with your phone so this is an example you don't place your phone on the table you leave your phone in your handbag or somewhere put in your bag on silent so that because at the table we're about engaging and we're about having a good time and relating sorry guys i'm putting my phone down <laughs> so don't come with your phone to the table so your phones are kept away and remember to put it on silent yeah, it's actually a good, it's, a, it's courteous to just mm. create a um, conducive environment. It's not good manners to keep on receiving your calls and your phone is ringing or you're just on your phone and people are eating or they're talking. It's, it's, it's bad manners. Mm. Yeah. So don't come with your phone to the table. If you have a very, very important call to take, when you come, let the host know at 8 o'clock, I have a very important call. You'll kindly excuse me. And so it's once. You don't have 10 important calls, so you're not studying, studying and <laughs> going. It's not the end of the world. I usually joke and say you're not the president. Yeah, the, 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 the country is not burning. If Uhuru can sit down and have dinner, so can you. You can have time. You can have time. <laughs> okay, time. So no phones on the table. Um, next, we look at what is on our table. Um, we always start from the inside out, meaning... Um, by looking at this setup, I already know I'm going to have soup. This is my soup spoon. I already know I'm going to have dessert because I have my dessert fork. I already know that I'm going to have a kind of meat because I have my fork and knife. Sometimes you go, you find three spoons, three forks. Uh, we might have two spoons. We might have a small plate here with a butter knife. So, like I said, don't panic. If you don't know, just look at the guest who knows, who looks like they know what they're doing. Okay, don't panic because it can be seen on your face. What do you think? Yeah, that is true. You don't have to panic. Mm. Just wait for the next person to start, mm -hmm. then see how they are starting, then just follow the cue. Yeah. yeah. So um, then we also have a glass of water. The glass of water is usually filled with water, so it's always a glass of water. And then here, I already know I'm going to have red wine. So the host will leave a glass depending on what they are serving you. If they are serving you champagne, you would have had a champagne glass. True. When you go to the restaurant and you find three glasses, we have champagne, red wine, white wine. They do like that because they do it like that because they don't know what you're Your going to order. To your preferred drink. So let's say you say I want white wine. They will remove the red wine glass and the champagne glass and leave the white wine glass. That's very true. But actually, in the restaurant, you don't even have to be mm. scared so much or bothered about the glasses mm. because there is always someone serving you. So nice. whoever is serving you, they will dictate if it's water, if it's mm. wine. So for glasses, it becomes mm. very easy. easy yes. Mm. Okay, guys, that's a tip because we also have started from there. If you're going on dates and uh, you're there looking hot and nice, but you have no idea what to do. <laughs> so even as it's true learning. So once you know that, you'll sit down and um, you'll wait for the cue of the host, meaning uh, she'll now serve the courses. Because the, co the host will excuse herself if she's the one serving. Yeah. But I mostly prefer, if I've invited people at home, to have someone who is serving so that I don't keep leaving the table. I want to keep to engage with my your guests. guests. So I'll avoid it all. My health or my, my daughters what to serve. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll start with soup today. And so we'll show you how to do that. So now your host has served soup and everyone seated down. Like I said, you take the cue from your host. We wait until the host starts and that's the cue for us to start. So like I said, um, the soup spoon from out to in, this is a soup spoon. 
this is a bit curved so you take your spoon and eat once the whole starts you also start um, secondly don't put salt and pepper don't add salt and pepper until you've tasted your food because people sometimes have this tendency of just adding automatically yeah uh, so taste first before you add so we'll start with our soup so check this uh, the spoon guys I'm not an expert so before I used to pick my soup like that but nowadays at least I learned to avoid pouring I pick my soup like this then I make sure I'm ending at the end so that I don't pour and then I put it to my mouth and I don't put it like this I put it like to avoid spillage yeah mm -hmm. so now you enjoy your soup and um, remember don't pace yourself don't go too fast don't go too slow true um, notice everyone's space at the table you don't want to be the one who's Pace yourself mm, because you don't want to finish fast. You don't want to finish fast, and everyone else is still eating. And number two, you don't want to eat big quantities. You see what has happened to me right now? I had to stop to speak. How do you know you're, you've eaten too much? Is when someone engages me, I'll have to chew fast, then to speak to you. So, small mouthfuls. There's no hurry. It's about eating, and we are engaging. Mm. Like that. That's the point. She's doing it so well. I wish I was as graceful as Alice. I'm not as graceful. Yeah. So remember, pace yourself with everyone at the table. Don't go too fast. There's no hurry. And um, enjoy and talk and chat. Don't be the one at the table who's not speaking. Have you ever had guests who don't speak? Yeah, so many times. And you wonder because the conversation will not flow. Mm -hmm. And again, as you've said, don't be too fast. Mm -hmm. Also, don't be too slow mm -hmm. because when you're too slow, then we will all clear our table and you're still left behind. We are waiting for yeah. you. So pace yourself, guys. And talk and don't chat. Don't, um, don't be shy. You know, some people don't speak. And even when the table is speaking, how many are too? You know. But it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I've never experienced it. Like, I've um, invited a couple. So the man is our friend and the lady who's maybe a new girlfriend, or she doesn't speak. So I keep having to prompt her. Yeah. So it makes everyone at the table uncomfortable. Yeah. It's good to just make sure, because it's a sign of also showing you're comfortable around the people mm. and you mm. fit in. Mm. Yeah. When you talk and when you converse with your the other people on the table, it's it's a you blend you mm -hmm. you are together yes. So I have a, I eat very fast so <laughs> when I eat when food is still hot so it was a very big lesson for me because I eat very fast. The first date I ever went guys I finished my food before the guy who had taken me for the date. It was a fast date I think it was Mark Fries but we we'll limited the chips fast. <laughs> So it's something I struggle with because I do everything fast. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid uh, negative energy on the table. True. Um, it's usually advisable not to talk about topics that elicit a lot of emotions unless you're very close to those people. Avoid talking about politics if you can. Um, Bad experiences. Yes. Um, also, gossiping on dining tables, it's not a very good thing, it can make someone choke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't uh, gossip. Just try to have positive conversation. There's so many things we can talk about. Um, I know it's common in African culture to talk about politics anywhere, but sometimes um, people's political views are very different and it can elicit a lot of different emotions, mm. yeah, feelings. Mm. Yeah. So, talk about positive things, um, talk about things that. Um, Maybe you know your host enjoys or to just trigger conversation on what is trending, what has been happening. Yeah. yeah. A general life mm. or things in regards to what you do, maybe business, mm. your work, yeah, stuff like mm. that. But sometimes it's not a very good thing also to you talk about work. Yeah, yes. you might overdo <laughs> it. I also tend not to like talking about work. Yeah. Because I might get carried away. True. And um, also remember, which is something also I'm learning on the table. Uh, give other people a chance to speak. That is true, yeah. Uh, but also, that I think depends with uh, people's characters. Mm. There are people who just talk. They mm. talk. Mm. <laughs> I, I usually, if I was to be asked for me, when I have dinner, uh, dinner whatever with my friends, dinner days with my friends, I love inviting people who are talkative, yeah. who are outgoing. 
because personally myself for me that's my time to relax and enjoy good conversation so i like someone who will talk more than me same as me because yeah. actually i'm a little bit turned down yeah. and i don't talk as much so yeah. and also i'm the host so i've been cooking and i'm tired so i would like someone else to carry the conversation someone who's fun exciting yeah. i usually don't mind and my friends always know i prefer them to chat carry the conversation and i'll tip in on a need to yeah and it's a good way to keep the table happy yes and mm. enjoy the meal uh, guys i've just remembered something when you come for dinner if you've been invited we're just talking about it it's very polite to the host if you try and dress decently uh she's already told it's a formal dinner Skujana crocs, pyjamas, jeans. Try and dress the part. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes, like we're talking about it, uh, let's say you've been better between dinner and your mom is there, your husband is there. Dress appropriately. Yeah. I'm not saying um, don't be yourself, yeah. but dress appropriately. I gave an example of you could wear a very local dress and all your boobs are on the table. It's a bad sign. Yeah. It's and not good. As much as I'm a woman, I can't help but see. Yeah, and there are men there. We are just like, mm -hmm. not food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so just try and dress decently. It's good to um, adhere to that. And for the sake of your host who's put effort to cook for you and set the table for you and create time for you, put some effort in your dressing. Very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put effort. Uh, Akuna crocs. Uh, by the way, it's respectful to just wear something mm -hmm. for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, I'm done with my soup. I've just been reminded. Um, when you find the setup like this, don't, like I was asked, do you remove this, the soup and then start eating? No. Just the way the setup is, there's a reason. The host knows why. Like here, uh, on this table today, this was for soup. The next one will be for salad. And then the next one is for your main course. So there's, your host has set it up like that for a reason. So don't remove the cutlery from the setup and don't forget there's someone next to you so you can't do that you know invading their space and once you're done with your soup like i'm done you just put your spoon inside you leave your spoon inside the bowl don't remove it and put it on the table you're dirtifying someone else's I'm, I'm passionate about it you're, you're you're putting marks on someone else's tablecloth and it's not kind so like now you're done with the soup the host can see everyone is done and then remove the soup bowl and you'll go to the next course So guys, we now have our main course, and like we said, it's a lamb and mashed and some vegetables. Just remembered something, um, for people who wear makeup and lipstick, like myself, uh, before I would have come to the table, I would have just taken a tissue and parted my lips, because I don't want to have transference on my glass. Yeah, so I'll just hold my glass at the stem. I don't want to have that red line, so that's why you have to Pat hard until. So now you don't have that transparency because you don't you don't want to have a red stain all over your glass. And also remember where you where you've drunk from, drink from the same place, so that you don't keep going around. And guys, don't panic. It seems like you won't be able to enjoy your dinner, but just relax and do it relax. Even if you make a mistake, it's fine. You learn. So now we're going to the main course. The main course has been served by the host. Like I said, take the cue from the host. And once the host starts eating, and for example, um, depends on your host. Some hosts will pray. Yeah, some will pray. Others will not have to necessarily because of religion, background. Maybe they prayed in the kitchen. So you don't take pressure. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, for example, if you go to a host before the service, certain they say you pray and um, you don't... You're not adhere to that kind of thought or that school of thought. It, just be polite. You don't have to close your eyes, but just be polite. And for the hosts, make sure the prayer is short, please, so the food doesn't get cold. <laughs> so like in this case, the food has been served. Sometimes the food is plated, like here. Or sometimes the food is at the table and you have to pass around. Please remember, there's everyone at the table, everyone should have a portion. So don't serve too much. Yeah. So... A little because there's a lot of food going around make sure you're passing it around from your right to the next pasta not across the table 
and don't try to reach for stuff on mm -hmm. the other side of the table. It's polite to just ask mm -hmm. the person next to you to pass it to you. And pass it yeah. to you. Um, small amounts. You know the way um, you come somewhere to, to dinner and they're serving prawns and prawns could be your favorite. And the prawns are like 13 and you weigh and see um, there are six guests. So it should have two. Don't put five and then announce, oh, I love prawns so much. And then you put six. It's bad manners. Bad manners, <laughs> you know. Everyone needs to have a taste. So yeah, you need to be considerate. Considerate, yeah, and pace yourself. So when you start, we'll start, uh, as usual, everyone knows this. You hold your fork on your right, your knife on the right hand, sorry guys, and then your fork. And so you cut your meat, your food. And like we said, gently and slowly, don't make a noise, don't. Remember, I decided to eat the fork and knife I used to miss and it hits the plate, make noise. And then I bring it to my. Sorry, like I said, small mouthfuls. So, as Kathy has said, um, there is th this way of holding your cutlery, the fork and the knife, that's the continental way. There is also the American way of um, eating, or rather the zigzag, yeah? Mm -hmm. Where you use your right and left to just cut and once you're done you put your knife mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and you, you can change. you change your hands yeah mm -hmm. you can either eat this way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and then there's a continental one like what we are doing we are this is the british way where you just cut as you eat so you cut as i prefer this method because i don't have to keep changing my cutlery so you cut as you eat i mentioned small mouthfuls always Never ever put your elbows on the table when you're having dinner. Once the dinner is over and you're conversing and maybe you're having a nightcap, you can, but never put your elbows on the table. And also your posture should be straight. You should look interested in the conversation. Look happy to be here, excited to be here. Don't be like, <laughs> you know, the, the host has taken time and you want to portray that you are happy to be here and you're happy, you're glad that you're invited. So no elbows on the table and pace yourself and what else? Don't put too much food in your mouth Yeah. because you'll not be able to converse. And when you're sitting, when having dinner, make sure you sit upright, don't slouch, don't mm -hmm. lean on the table, as Kathy has said, just sit upright mm. and make sure your hands are at this level when having your meal don't no <laughs> yes or yeah yeah don't don't I'm don't do that more. yeah just mm. let it be at at this level once you're done with your food maybe you can put your hands down mm. or just one hand mm. you can leave it on the table but not like this, chewing and waiting to get another bite. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll show you, for example, if I want to excuse myself. For, it depends. Um, I would advise, uh, make sure you go to the bathroom before we sit down for dinner. And the host always says, um, in five minutes, we'll be sitting down for dinner. In that five minutes, use that time to powder your nose, apply your lipstick if you want, to spray yourself, put your phone on silent, go to the bathroom. And advice for the dining period, don't. The eating period don't go to the bathroom but if you have to because sometimes you have a tummy ache maybe you had something that made you gassy that you need to go to the bathroom you don't need to say excuse me guys i'm going to the bathroom today i had too much beans in at lunch time and now <laughs> don't explain yourself tmi too much information so i'll just say excuse me i'll leave my fork and knife that way to show that i'm coming back i'm not done with my food i will pull my chair and then I'll take my napkin and I will not place it on the table. I'll place it on the, I'll hold it in the middle and place it on the seat and then go to the bathroom. Am I going to the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the bathroom. And then um, come back, pick, sorry, pick my napkin and back on my lap and just continue. So don't put your napkin on the table and you don't need to announce why you need to go there, but just say, excuse me. And try not to excuse yourself too much. Then right, enjoy your meal. If you want seconds and the second seconds are available, please have. 
on that note, mm -hmm. Kathy has talked about lipstick, makeup. Please make sure you don't fix that on the dining table on the dining table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you want to fix your lipstick, just go to the excuse yourself, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Don't do it on, on the dining table, it's not cut yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even in restaurants, people sometimes they see them fixing their makeup on the on the table. Someone was asking, um, if you have the napkin, how do you wipe yourself? Because this napkin is to wipe any spillage and stuff like that. What if it's white? Um, my napkin, mm -hmm. I should actually use this inner side mm. because this is not so big, mm. but it's just enough to just use the the inner side, and then you don't wipe <sighs> because you will interfere with your makeup, right? Mm. You wipe it off, mm. so you dab, yeah, yeah. just like that, mm. yeah, oh. and then you fold it back, put it on your lap. So the napkin is there for you to use. Uh, so now we are done with our main course and as you've seen uh, we've tried our best to finish the food we actually cleared everything and this is another thing when you go to uh, to a host house someone's house try and finish the food and try to eat as much as you can the host has spent a whole day sweating buying shopping uh, put effort don't be picky and as you're eating you're like i don't like tomatoes why do you put garlic is there garlic in this food you know it's too much salt please if you don't have anything positive to say, please keep quiet and try to eat as much as you can. Sometimes you don't like a particular food. Like for example, I'm not big on seafood, but if it's served, I won't not eat because I'm not severely allergic to it. So I'll give it my best and the host won't even know that I don't like seafood. So the host has um, put effort, put effort to eat. When you're done, put your fork and a knife on the four o'clock, the four o'clock method, the four o'clock hand on the watch. Uh, not like this, but like this. Wait for everyone else to finish. The host will get the cue and the plates will be removed and then we wait for dessert. Usually before dessert people discuss. Yeah, they talk, they take a break for mm. just the food to go down. Yeah. People have a drink. Um, that's another point to note. Please uh, know your levels. Yeah, know your just limits. check enough for you. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, don't come and overdo. overdo and make assumption it's red wine and take five, ten guys. As a host, I will not not refuse to serve you as I when I see your glass is, glass is nearly empty. I serve more. Uh, in our African culture, we are also very kind, very generous, very generous. So we'll serve you. So it's very um, uncultured to get drunk over dinner. <laughs> over dinner, yeah. um, you're being carried away. You're stammering. You're disrupting. You're causing chaos. So know your limit. You know, there's no hurry, there's no competition, so... And actually the wine mm. is just to help you digest the food mm. or just to take it down. It's not for getting drunk, especially on a dining table. It's not for getting you drunk. Mm. Yeah. So know your, know your levels, master your levels. So we are done, we we'll move to dessert. And dessert is carrot cake. It's an um, eggless carrot cake with uh, vanilla custard. And we have our dessert fork on that side. So why is it put that way? When... Uh, your dessert comes, you move it this way. If we had a dessert spoon, it would have been facing the other way, so we would have moved it, moved it this way. The dessert spoon would have been for ice cream, um, creme brulee, things like those. So we are done next to dessert. Here we are finally at the end of the of the course. Now we're having dessert, the carrot cake and, and the custard. And so this is the dessert fork. So what I'll do, I'll move it from there to this side, and then wait for the cue for the host. When the host starts, we also start. And if you want to turn your plate, if you have a CD like me. I want you to face me, and you just enjoy your dessert as you chat. You know, you don't really have to finish. You're not. I'm not a sweet tooth, so. I struggle with dessert. I better save my calories for alcohol. So yeah, enjoy, you enjoy your dessert and you chat and you laugh. And now it's a bit more relaxed. The food is over. And um, once it's over and you have something to tell the host, it's usually very nice to compliment the host, but I'm sure that you're very sincere. Don't tell the host something that they'll obviously know. It's a lie. So make sure your comments, your um, compliments are very sincere genuine. and genuine and then um, once you're done finish with dessert the host will tell everyone thank you for
for coming to the table, hope you enjoyed the food. And now we'll go to an informal setting, an informal area and chat and have more alcohol and just rest, uh, spend the evening together. After everything is done, when this is over now, when you're chatting, you can put your hand on the, your elbow on the table. But for now, until it's done, you can't. And yeah, those are just the basic rules. Anything else you remember? Um, now that we are not going to eat our dessert like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can hold our fork like a um, yeah. pencil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the way Kathy is doing it, mm -hmm. just like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so funny with you. Mm. Just, yeah, like that. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So if you go that, so you hold it like a pencil, a pincer grip. Yeah, like that. So, hope guys, you've learned and enjoyed. We're going to have an extension of this video with Alice. And I'm very excited because hers is going to be around the same thing but showing us different things. So guys, be on the lookout and um, please, please subscribe to her channel, like her videos, watch and support her. She's really uh, releasing amazing content. So just remember, when you invite someone's house, remember to understand your host and their style. If your host is the kind of person who doesn't like a guest over staying, um, you, can, you can get the the body language, the cue from the host, uh, it's 11, 11.30, uh, they've served all the wine and they're not removing more wine or more alcohol. That's the cue to finish your wine, uh, bid goodbye and farewell and leave. Um, I'm a bit different if you come to a house at midnight is when things are happening. So we'd really, really love our guests staying past midnight and us enjoying and having fun. We don't mind, but every host is different. So remember not to overstay because it's sometimes very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'd let Sylvia say something, but in short. Thank you so much, Kathy, for having me. You're welcome. I, thank you. I really appreciate. The meal was delicious, and wow, this was amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you've loved what Kathy and I have put out there. Mm -hmm. I hope you've learned a few tips on... Um, dining table etiquette and please for for more interaction let's uh, meet on the comment section definitely kathy will be responding to your comments because it's a channel yes. <laughs> and it's it's good to just give um other ideas uh, of something that you feel we've left out mm. and uh, we'll have a continuation of this video on my channel on her channel yeah oh. actually on my channel yeah. <laughs> on youtube so Kathy will be featuring, yes. be on the lookout to just see what more we'll put out on a uh, dining table etiquette. Thank you so much guys. Thank you so much angels. Wow, nice. I wanted to say the angel parts because on our channel she says, Hi angels, I don't have a name for you, I just have guys, so I'm going to style up. Um, I'll link her YouTube channel on this video so you guys will follow, subscribe and like. Thank you so much for the support so far. I'm very grateful. And until next time, guys, see you. Bye. Oh, a big tot. <laughs>